Decorating Pages is a podcast dedicated to taking you behind the scenes of the designs of your favorite TV shows and films. Each episode, I'll be sharing design stories from some of Hollywood's most famous sets. Interviews from set decorators, production designers, directors, and actors about creating the look of TV and film, about their design inspirations, and stories that take sets from page to screen. Hello and welcome to Decorating Pages. I am your host, Kim Wanup. How you doing? I know how you're doing. Uh, we all know how we're all doing because it's Monday night and SAG has rejected the proposal from the producers because of, mostly because of AI, is what I just read. Okay, we need to get a mediator in there. Okay, I don't know who it is. Get the guy in there from the Directors Guild that settled so quickly back in uh, May, June. Let's get that guy in there and get this done because it's, I'm sorry, it's bullshit at this point. I want my friends and all of these good people to get back to work. Like, I, I'm in no way, uh, when I said three weeks ago that I'm back to work, did I mean at all like Hollywood's back to work? I am very lucky that I'm on one of the few shows that is just prepping. We're not shooting. We don't have a waiver. We're just prepping. And even at that, we're lay- they're laying people off on the crew because we have nothing left to prep without actors. We're all spokes in this wheel. And we can't. now we're at the point where we need actors. And now they, they're probably going to have to shut this down if it doesn't like get it together in the next two weeks. And... I know that I've been pretty quiet in a sense of like not giving out the urgency of this, but now I feel like maybe, guys, you got to take the take a deal. I mean, you got to do something. People need to work. The holidays are around the corner. And then my fear is, which I'm sure is creeping in everybody's mind, the producers are going to be like, well... Now let's just take time and iron out this AI uh, proposal because it's the holidays and they're not going to start anything up now and they're going to wait till next year. And I hate to put that out into the universe, but I think it's a really big possibility. So I just, I can't believe they can't get this done. Like seriously, come on, get a mediator in there, get Scorsese or somebody or like... Just get somebody in there. I don't know why I said him. Seems like a good guy. Seems like a dad or something. Like, get in there and and figure it out. You know what? I mean, sidebar here. His daughter is on TikTok and Instagram, and she makes some great videos about him. He's hilarious, obviously, but he's Scorsese. But yeah, um, check that out if you had. I don't have her name in front of me, and I don't know, but it's Scorsese's daughter. So... I think this, I'm talking about what it's on everybody else's mind, and I feel really stressed out for everybody, mostly because I feel like it's affecting people's households so much. I can't take it. I just feel so bad at this point. So many people are out of work. Like, can we emphasize this? Can SAG get some PR of how bad it is for the rest of us? I mean... (laughs) Or can I Otzi get in there and get up some PR of how bad it is for us? Uh, more so than they have been, maybe? Like call up Newsom or something? I don't know. I don't know. I just have this little podcast and um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everyone who's not working. Um, and I probably won't be by the end of the week. Let's be honest. They're not going to keep us going. And I hate to put that out there because <laughs> I want to work. I had such a great Friday, uh, last Friday, decorating, like I was in the zone, I was making decisions for the character, I was feeling out the space, I was moving things around, Uh, it just felt so good to be at work and to decorate and to, I was in a meeting today, I was in a physical product, like a concept meeting today, I don't think I have been in a room for a concept meeting since 2019. I'm not even shitting you. Everything has been over Zoom. And today was my first in-person concept meeting. Is that true? 
I think so. Even Rutherford Falls, I think we did it all, I think. Oh, man. Now I can't think. I think we did it all by Zoom. Man, I'm losing it. It's this podcast. I've got too much going on. I don't know. I can't keep it all straight. Um, I don't know. I just hope we all get it done. And I feel bad for everyone and everyone even making these decisions. Just let's just get it done. That's all. I just, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. Except for, um, I got some great feedback <laughs> on the uh, production design film study that I put out uh, two weeks ago with uh, Raph Leiden and Adam Rao for the years of 1947. If you haven't heard it or watched it on YouTube, please check it out. I accidentally erased it on YouTube. That was fun. That was sheer panic because I'm a dork and I don't know how to use anything. And I accidentally erased it. So uh, it looks like now I only have like three views or something, but really it was doing well and I erased all those views, sorry. But uh, if you haven't, check it out. And then this week, tomorrow, I am going to put out on YouTube the year 2022, which is a solo. It's just me talking about All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, Babylon, uh, The Fablemans, and Elvis. Um, I wanted to do, uh, 2022 because it's so recent and it's so sort of fresh of, um, you know, seeing films and, um, I definitely wanted to do something, you know, in the past couple of years, just to show of the design of, of now. And, um, the video that I have put up, I, captured a lot of the screen shots from um, the ADG awards, uh, not the awards, but when you submit for the ADGs, you have to put together a packet of all of the sets and, you know, you could put drawings, you could put graphics, you could put, put anything in there you help, I think is going to help you get a vote and people look at it and then they vote. And I have said on this podcast for years how I love to go in and look at these packets every year to look at people's work. So I thought it was also a great opportunity because usually it's only ADG members looking at this or people who know the website. So um, most of the pictures, there's construction drawings, there's, like I said, graphic packages, um, there's location photos. So I drew from... Um, a lot of those pictures and then um, screenshots of the films when I talked about it. So, yeah, and maybe I agree with the winner and maybe I don't. You'll have to listen to find out. But I'm hoping to... I finally figured it out. I think I'm going to release the videos like every other week and um, and the podcasts. Now, <laughs> here's another thing because I'm a dork. I didn't record myself as a podcast. I only record the video on 22. So I got to figure that out maybe tonight or tomorrow night. <laughs> so there may or may not be a podcast to accompany that video. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I can do it. Okay, cool. Uh, what else? <laughs> I was busy the last two weeks. I know I haven't been around, um, but I, I had uh, sinus surgery which uh, has still been painful. I don't remember how painful this was 10 years ago when I had it before. And then I went to San Francisco and then I had a head cold and then I was working and all, and Halloween took up some time. So I haven't, either I don't remember what I watched or I haven't, I really haven't watched much. And I've been working on those design film studies, but I did watch Urban Cowboy. Have you seen Urban Cowboy lately? Damn, that is a good film. Travolta was so good. What was that? Who was his agent? He had so many good roles in the early 80s, late 70s. Like, think of that. Like, Saturday Night Fever, he greased it. Urban Cowboy. Remember that, mo- that movie, Perfect, which I think did bad, but I kind of thought it was good. Or then Staying Alive, I don't think it was that good. I don't know. But, um, man, Urban Cowboy, if you are doing some research of... Um, the like a period piece early 80s Texas trailer living man it is good research get on that so funny thing I looked it up and Stephen Grimes is the production designer at 
who I just watched out of Africa for film study of 1985. And um, his, I mean, his resume is phenomenal. And then the decorator, George Nelson, did Apocalypse Now, Godfather 2, Mr. Mom, Need I Say More, one of my favorite films ever. Yeah. Um, those car beds, he should have got an Oscar for putting those car beds in, in Mr. Mom. Oh, it's, uh, it makes me happy. Um, so Urban Cowboy, check that out. The costumes, I mean, Deborah Winger's fantastic. Uh, can't say much more about it, but, um, oh, we started that All the Light You Cannot See, which then I just forgot, I forgot that I watched that. Um, I forgot to write down the designer and all. Um, I'll talk about that maybe next week then. Because I don't have the names in front of me. It's not that good. I don't know. People read the book. They love it. I, I didn't read the book, unfortunately. I'll tell you what I am reading, though. <laughs> segue into Oral History of Hollywood. And it's 28 hours long. I think I mentioned it last podcast. It's great. Man, I've done eight hours already. Or nine. <laughs> it's great. I love listening to like all of these stories about the studios and... Mare and Zanuck and and now they go into a chapter on each department head so I only started that today they did directors and writers yeah this book is fantastic it's all an oral history it's it's all interviews taken from AFI basically that they've collaborated to make a story out of um I don't even have the authors in front of me I don't know where my cell phone is um but yes oral history of Hollywood Definitely recommend that. That was on that list that I gave out a couple weeks ago of like film books you must read that was on, I think it was IndieWire. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, what else? That's it. Sister Wives. But you know, we don't talk about Sister Wives here. That's my other secret podcast you're not listening to with Jane Madden. <laughs> but on this episode, uh, I do talk to... Jonathan DeRosa, prop master for the NBC show Found. The show follows a crisis management team dedicated to finding missing persons that are overlooked by the system. Uh, I talked to Jonathan about the meticulous art of prop creation and selection, which brings you know these stories to life. He drew inspiration from Silence of the Lambs for this. And um, we talk a lot about like uh, character development and props and making props and you know giving secrets away not too early or giving clues and easter eggs and things like that um in the show so always great to talk to a prop master because a set decorator and a prop master work pretty closely together we overlap a lot on little things um the prop master does everything that's um very identifiable to the character their watch their briefcase their sunglasses handwritten letters, um, things like that. We overlap a lot in, um, tableware or, um, like, you know, like glasses or, oh, I can't, no, I can't think of what else we overlap. <laughs> Just a million things. I can't think of one. Awesome. Um, but I had a great time talking to him. So I hope you enjoy. Is found in Atlanta? Are you on found right now? Did you go back to work? Oh no, we're not back at no. work. Uh, no. We're uh, found found a shot in Atlanta. The story is based in DC, but yeah, DC. shot in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've done a show shot. I've done a couple shows shot for LA for DC. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> getting that DC vibe. You got you got your license plates you got all your art yeah. department has their street tags and everything and it's yeah uh, it's always the it's always the tags that are always the probably like my least favorite prop which yeah <laughs> on the right foot my least favorite prop is the tags <laughs> <laughs> yeah well too because if you have outdoor shots and you have a lot of cars i mean it's your yeah. you, you got to coordinate with the ad's like how many cars are we going to have how many are we going to make up there are some people out of state like you know, it's like a whole conversation of getting tags <laughs> for simple. It's, yeah, that, that's my job is to live in those gray areas to uh, make sure that stuff is is done. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I am a set decorator, so I work 
really closely with my prop masters on every show. Yeah. And as you were just saying, there is a lot of gray area between us. And yeah. from show to show, even I'll do these dishes, you do the bar taps, I'll do the bar taps this time. Okay, you got the dish. Okay, yeah. so totally. it is, it's kind of like a little, it's a relationship, it's a little marriage between the prop master and the set decorator, I always feel. Totally. Yeah, that's and that's why I try to always lead with my best foot forward. You know, I think I think the best way to make it in this business, as I'm sure you know, for me at least, for to have gotten to to the to the opportunities that I've gotten was by just checking my ego at yeah. the door. You know, yeah, yeah. it's it's any in any job, but by doing that, I think that's the best way to like collaborate. Like I consider myself an artist. You you yourself are an artist. Like we are we're hired because you're you want my inter artistic interpretation of what this script is. And particularly, I mean, like, I want those to live through that. Sets, I mean, gosh, I mean, that's your artistic interpretation, you know? Yeah. Wes Anderson needs a specific set decorator. David, David Fincher needs a specific set decorator to bring those worlds to life. So it's that's what I think is, is, is kind of the beauty, but especially between our two departments, is that we get to have this kind of lovely dance, and it's here's my art, what's your art, and how can we make our art grander, you yeah. know? And 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 complement each other. Exactly. Because a lot of times, you know, I, I might do this whole room, but they're just gonna, they're really just gonna shoot the desk and the pen and pencil totally. set that you've, you've picked out. And, you know, talking about that, like, oh, well, we did this old stationery on the desk, and if you show up, and you had a completely different conversation with the director that it's totally modern. Like that yeah. happens, <laughs> so totally. we we always have to communicate with each other. Um, in uh, in found, are there any specific props that you've had to have made for the main characters? For found, um, usually, uh, like usually, I love doing the fabrications uh, and things like that. But with found, we the story is told at a much more street level. Yeah. you know, realistic tone. So I didn't get the opportunity to create much, like anything kind of fantastical. But while that energy then gets to get diverted to like, what can we make realistic? What can we give breadth to? And exactly like what you're saying, you know, like maybe we're just going to shoot in this corner of this vintage office, but you are going to make the whole room 100%. I'm going to give you a prop of I'm going to give you a hero piece a police file. It's going to it's you're going to be able to flip yeah. pages. I'm going to be I'm going to you're going to see all my handwriting yeah. all over it. Um that to me is just really what I can st I can s somehow spend hours oh doing God, even yeah. a 12 hour <laughs> day. I just kind of love that kind of my stuff. Oh, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of a freak for it. Well, in the, in the show, what I think is so interesting is you have good and but good and bad. You got evil, evil and good here. I've seen three episodes, I believe, are have uh -huh. are, are released already. So mm -hmm. I'm not spoiling anything. It's already out that you know she she was abducted and now has captured her abductor years later and yes. i when i got that turn in the story i thought well that's a fantastic set because how do you yeah. make shift all that and then knowing that i'm going to talk to you like i i was wondering for a prop master's eye like what are you going to get what would she give him or what wouldn't she give him and tease him with and things like that which i'm sure is in the script yeah. too but i'm sure you have input on that absolutely and you're you this is why we i would love to work i'm, I'm already like loving our vibes together so yeah. we love to yeah. work with <laughs> that was like that was that was episode like the pilot yeah the first episode we were like uh, i went to nk who's our lovely showrunner and creator and i was like what is you know i, I understand what's going on here and we want to lead the audience but let's also for me what i got to really pour into this was the easter eggs yes. what can we set up for the audience to be like aha i can go back and watch all of season one and see these little easter eggs along the way that was super important to me and uh nk and the creators really loved that so yeah we were we we have this room you know where you put mark paul gosler 
and we're like, what will he do? What won't he do? And so we got to live in this world. We definitely were in, uh, inspired by Silence of the Lambs mm. with this one, which was super fun to do. And so uh, we were stringing along this idea of mystery, and I won't spoil anything, is like, can he get out at any time? Does he want to be there? Is he willingly being there? Mm -hmm. So I want these, we wanted these questions to just kind of start a bury, uh, being put in the, the audience's mind to think about that. So yeah, we were, what can he grab? What can he use? How far is the chain? Yeah. You know, how to stage this with a camera and things like that. So that was fun to break that down. Because you're the chain, you're the, I mean, Props does the chains and everything, and you got to make sure the yeah. actor doesn't get hurt, and you got to make sure either they're fake or real, and sometimes they won't real yeah. because of the weight, which I get. Like, mm -hmm. it's always um, it's always a thing when actors go to pick up like a grocery bag, and you can tell nothing's in it. Yeah. And and I always think to my head, well, that's probably take thirty, and they took it out, or you know, or, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. But and that, and that baguette is always sticking out yeah. of it, as if. <laughs> yeah. Still come home today with like baguettes. It's like, yeah. where'd you go? It's like, yeah. I'm sword. I got baguettes. And fresh Look, flowers. Gone. Fresh flowers, right. baguettes. Wow. Like everybody's yeah, in always, France. It's, yeah. There's these hits when it comes to props that you just kind of have to put in there. If you're on a film set on a film, you have to give them like the BK mics. Yeah. You know, that no one needs that. <laughs> yeah, no. But the audience <laughs> needs to know that. Um, yeah, it, my, my trick is I live by the rule of three. So I'll have, I'll oh. have a real shopping bag. I'll have the fake shopping bag and I'll have a medium shopping bag somewhere in between there. So, you know, yeah, as you like take 30, it's going to get a little, get a little, little heavy for them. So, yeah. I think that's, I mean, I could, I could never do props cause I don't want to deal with actors that much. I just want to focus on my world in a sense, mm -hmm. but I also too, a lot of times when we overlap, I'm like, oh yeah, I got those plates. And then it'll be like day of and the prop must be like, oh, you got like five of each, right? And I'm like, no, I think right. five of each. I got two. Uh, I mean, how many takes are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, I've learned my lesson, but there's always that I forget how many multiples props needs because they have yeah. to be ready for the next take and the reset might you know take longer and and yeah. on something like this like i don't know if i've seen blood yet but when blood gets involved there's many more <laughs> many more doubles and things like yeah. that so yeah you always want to be prepared for the it's always time management and 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 pulling the trick off there's yeah. there's there's a magician's code somewhere where we have yeah. to find that with each one and like you know it's about communicating it's about hey we discussed we're gonna do 10 but i brought 15 right. you know kind of <laughs> right. thing. we'll always have more um and as long as we're communicating about it it's fun but yeah like something like the chains and things like that was a was big conversations and we yeah. had just done a we, those chains were actually, you know, fun IMDb fact for whoever cares. The chains that Mark Paul Gossler uh, wears are the same chains that the creature man thing wears in Marvel's Werewolf by Night, oh. uh, which is we had just done that show. And um, there is a segment where this big creature He's got chains all over him. And so we had different styles of chains, light, foam, et cetera, et cetera. And so now the chains that are on the set of uh of found that wrap Mark Paul Gosler, they can only they can only keep Man Thing and, and Mark Paul Gosler at bay. <laughs> yeah, really, there you go. That's testament to him and his longevity of a career, I must say. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, he made it it's it made it this far. <laughs> um, so when you're starting a show like Found. What, yeah. you know, I have, pre I have prep time as a set decorator and um, yeah. usually the prop master's not too far behind me, maybe a week or two, but what is yeah. your prep like for, for a show like Found? Um, it's, it's, I have a lovely and diverse team who I can't do any show without much love to Joe, Jules, Antoine and Victoria. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, we come together, we look at our scripts, we all give our interpretations of that, and we present, um, basically, I'll, I'll, I'll have like a slideshow meeting as first with the director, and I'll go through the script, I'll say, here's here are these beats, 
And then for me, I'm such a, I'm a fan of cinema. I'm a fan of the real world, obviously. So in my slides, you'll see, you know, screenshots of other movies that inspired me. Um, anything in the in, in in real life that we're going to be pulling from, I'll go up to set decorating because you guys always have amazing photos of how you envision the world, and I try to see where my puzzle piece can best fit. And then so I I, I think film is always best worked when we are inspired by what's come before us, and so I'm I'm happy to interpret things uh, that have come before and so yeah like we do like this is you know found is my interpretation of silence of the lambs i love that it's a beautiful movie and yeah. this is my go at it yeah. and so um i i have that pitch in consideration of how we do that and that is that's the that's the snowball that's the first meeting one week later we'll have a physical show and tell where we have the directors and the producers come out we get to show them things we get to interact with them and play with them i like this i don't like that Let's get this out of here. Let's keep this as an option. And um, yeah, that's that's how we, that's kind of how the ball rolls. It's the, the train track is always rolling, yeah. you know? <laughs> uh, uh, but again, it's, it's about that constant communication. Hey, this might change a little bit on the day, just so you know, it's, and, and luckily everyone on Found and uh, Greg Berlanti Productions were genuinely amicable genuinely lovely and nice. they consider everyone a department head uh, an artist and oh, what is on the camera at the end is our interpretation and our art and it was just such a fulfilling and lovely experience um so yeah i can't wait to get back to the second season oh that's awesome but how many first of all don't you love the the words uh we should have both <laughs> we should have both yeah and it's it's <laughs> And, and you I've, hear I've, that I've a lot props. in prop and when talking about props, like when you're because you're presenting options and you just want an answer. And sometimes people are yeah. indecisive and some shows, some people just we should have both. And then you're like, oh, my God, I got to make like 10 of each of these. Are you kidding me? Why did I just uh, it's, pick it's, one? it's always there. And the, the, the funniest thing about that is always not looking at the director who wants both because it's their prerogative. <laughs> to do so it's always looking at the producer. For the producer. Well, yeah. And they're like they want both. <laughs> No, an extra pick you know, one. X amount. Uh, I'll always keep a line in my budget. I have a little Wait. note section in my budget for why a number is that, and I'll say, yeah. and then I'll quote the director themselves. Again, Six it's takes. just this is what happens is how the train rolls. <laughs> how many episodes in season one are there? Ten? Uh, we were lucky to do thirteen. Oh, thirteen, and, uh, nice. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, uh, rumors of season two were twenty-two. I, I, oh, it's above my pay grade. I hope for as many because each episode was really super fun to do each episode was about something that i genuinely cared about in a social issue yeah. um so yeah i'm excited to that's a to unicorn for- you got a unicorn there for 22 <laughs> i used to do 22s i was on bones so i used to do 22s and like take oh, the oh, little yeah. take we the got little- a couple people over from bones yeah. michael michael sure one of the, or the producers i think he did bones. Oh, yeah. um Bones was beautiful. I mean, what a cool set that you guys got to build, which I think for a challenge for you would have to be, how do I diversify one set? Because they, they're always, it's their headquarters, you know? Yeah. So I think you did such a, I, I, I watched Bones and I thought you did such an amazing mm-hmm. job. Uh, you know, here's our main set. Here's the yeah. back one. It's lit this way. You yeah. know, I just, it was, it was very enjoyable. So yeah, kudos. Thank you. It was a, it was a, one of my first jobs and a, a fantastic way to learn how to decorate because although you have the lab to go back to every week, kind of like, you know, the home base, like they have her office or her apartment to go back to. And, but then, you know, there's always a dead body or like with your, like there's always someone to be found. So it's such a great way to learn. Um, uh, it was for me for set decorating because it was great but trial by fire don't yeah. we know it yeah. we it so we made it yeah and i'm sure you noticed on found their headquarters is all glass yeah yeah <laughs> it is i mean but that's that's how it is now because you want the depth and you want to shoot and you want the action of background and you know walking around in the background it's a beautiful set beautiful set and hey, i love her apartment yeah eddie Mattazzoni. Uh, he did a wonderful job really bringing that to life and, uh, it, you know, kudos to the camera department and the, and our DPs too, because it's not easy to shoot a whole room of glass Yeah, and 
they did creative ways of staging to the actors in different ways to make it diverse for a 60 minute, you know, a 40 minute uh, episode. Yeah. Do you have um, anything, uh, it might be something that hasn't aired yet though, but do you have anything this season as a prop that sticks out to you that was like a huge challenge? I don't know if you can... Uh, again, no, I, d we, um, I don't want to, it's not nothing, there's nothing overt spoilers. Um, there is an episode towards the later half where we get to kind of emulate Comic-Con. Oh. Uh, there's a cross between like an anime convention and a comic book convention. I grew up a big comic book kid. That's why I worked on Marvel movies. Yeah. And so that was super fun to do within the you know, within copyright laws. <laughs> oh, I've done, like, yeah, I've done, com I've done yeah. a Comic-Con. It's really challenging. I mean, yeah. I mean, for props, getting all the like fake cop, you know, comic books, if they're going to hold them or, you know, the yeah. costumes walking around for costumes yeah. to get those cleared. It's a huge deal to do a Comic-Con. <laughs> Huge. We have, yeah, there's a there's a there's a, a a a story about a killer who's targeting people who are fans of a book series, and mm. there is a convention for this book series that the penultimate episode or the penultimate finale of the episode takes place at, and so we spent a good time working with our department and costumes and saying what does this world look like? How do we bring it to life? From the badges that they wear right. to elaborate costumes and you know we do these episodes you know eight days you know eight working days that's a lot do you have a uh, it, it, do you have an overlap day too uh we do get a grace period day oh, yes, you get, which is so always you get a hiatus you got a uh, sorry a hiatus day in between episodes no we 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 roll right into the next you get into episode. the next yeah. so you're doing eight days you're doing one through eight and then day one is the next day, or are you doing day eight and day one on the same day? They, they were able to schedule it. They were able to schedule like the finishing of one episode in the beginning of the next. So we kind of got like this half day grace period. Oh, that's, um, that's Hey, we're going to nice. start this day finishing episode 12 and then halfway through episode 13 director is going to step in. So we have oh, like wow. little grace periods uh there which to me felt like a lot <laughs> <laughs> i i would kill for a hiatus <laughs> yeah kill. yeah i mean i, mean, I, I said that then the strike happened so now yeah i, I mean not like <laughs> I, I don't mean like like that i mean yeah. like doing a show like we used to do like oh two, three episodes in half hour we do three episodes hiatus week two episodes hiatus week, three episodes hiatus week. Like wow. even in half hour we had that on bones, we would take, we would do two or three episodes and then have a week off. Like there was a breather wow. for one hour back then, way back then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, we didn't get those kind of, uh, no, it's a, it's a, but I, you know, they, I will say that the production really, like I said, Greg Berlanti's production company and everybody really cared about the crew and oh, they awesome. did not, yeah, I've been on shows. I've been in this business twelve years where the where the production killed the crew, not mm -hmm. on found. Yeah, no, it seems what I well, I mean, I watch it and I think about. I mean, I have twin five year old boys, and I and when kids are abducted or anything, it's just like like takes your breath away. Like I can't believe this, yeah. this actually happens. And then in the scenes where she was taken for a year. And then he takes someone else and brings this other child in. It's like horrific in a sense of like, and then trying to put the responsibility on her. And the storyline yeah. is very touching and everything. But in these flashbacks that happened, I believe, 20 years prior, is it 20 or 10? 10? 20. Uh, 20 years. I believe it's 2003, but don't hate me if I'm, don't, no. don't be mad at no, me no. if I'm wrong. But but in in doing the flashbacks, were there any specific props that you had to, you know, date and, and go back and, and get? That was fun because actually, yeah, we actually did get to do more props uh, with uh, the flashbacks, which was fun because we did have to date them accordingly. It, may, it, might, it might have been 2012, I think 2000. Right. I think I'm thinking my age of her at that time, <laughs> I think. I think 2012. So we had to make sure, you know, you'll see cell phones later that those were appropriate. We had to make sure that they worked. Uh, and the first episode, one of my favorite classic props is the cast iron, the black cast iron pot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Team Gabby, she just does this beautiful bam 
bam! Yeah. And uh, our lovely stunt <laughs> coordinator, Mo, helped set that up. And I just love a good action like that. And man, that kid, she's going to be a star. She sold it. She's like, really good. The she's, young, she's beautiful. Yeah, she's really good. Um, she's great. We, we wanted that house to have a vintage grandma kind of vibe because that's eerie. I, I, that was something that was really important to me was like, how can we make everything that he gives to her look wholesome and lovely and something that you would buy at the store, but there's just this menacing yeah. undertone to what's going on here. You have a young black girl who is abducted, taken by a white man, yeah. and he thinks it's okay. So he he's living this freaky fantasy of 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 it being okay. So we wanted... We wanted the the placemats and the plates to have just kind of like this subtly lovely kind of vibe to them because it's eerie and it's disgusting. Yeah. So the image you're looking at, you should be repulsed by. And so I think uh, we got to have fun doing that. And then Sir's scripts are probably our biggest prop of the season. Uh, basically, we had a lot of backstory with that that we'll get to know more. But um, you know, has Indiana Jones has got his whip, sir, is 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 a yellow notepad. And mm -hmm. we'll find out more about that. And so yeah, we were just doing pages and pages of stories for him, going to like darker places and also just trying to emulate someone who would do such a heinous, entitled, horrible thing. Yeah. It it's funny when you talk about that the set where he's holding these girls hostage, I kept looking at the sofa. And the like the um, like Afghan like Afghan blankets and like yeah. older pillows, and I was trying to think like, is this a basement? Like I was like trying to figure out like where it is. So like I, I know I gotta watch. I gotta keep watching to yeah. figure it out. But it's, um, yeah, it's just like a half built house. But I think like what you're what you're doing is what you're what you're your point at is nailing what the art department was thinking, and that's kind of a characterization of this person is that you have an ugly old house. Yeah, and he's put what he thinks are pretty things on that. The seed is evil at the end of the day, and I yeah. think that house represents how Sir approaches this character and his mindset. And it's just, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I forgot about the, the how nice they made those couches yeah. and looking like that. <laughs> I mean, and the, the previous episode, we got to do a cake. Um, oh yeah, the cake that he throws on the a table. Birthday cake. <laughs> Cakes that are always big fun. with props. How many? How many takes? 20, yeah. 20 uh, I think we had about six cakes mm. on that one. Luckily, Mark Paul uh, is someone who's uh, amicable to work with. And, it and it helped, fell and very nicely. It fell and collapsed very nicely, I must say. We, we, and, and, uh, we had a love, we had a food stylist. We, <laughs> we, we made it happen. We, she built it at a slant and put the frosting a little bit higher on the edge. So when it hit, it slid which was super yeah. fun little trick that we got to do. And we also, you know, we made it flowery, yellow. I wanted that to stand out because like, where did he go to get that? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the world that set decorators and prop masters get to live in is like, where did they come from? What is that idea? Well, that, and, <laughs> that that's always the thing too, because I always think of what is the economic range of this character? And they would go to Target. So, or they would go to Kmart or whatever. They, you know, they would yeah. shop at Ethan Allen. I'm not like, above it. We'll... I'm, I'm, I, 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 I believe that they would go to that. I think it's realistic. Yeah. And that's not to say that, you know, I, you know, the production designer who does like There Will Be Blood is not going to use authentic right. ways to do their job. But we get to live in this world where that is kind of realistic. And I'm, makes sense to me. I, I have like a minuscule detail that I wanted to ask about because there is a scene where she's trying to force memories back and in the flashback she's eating spaghetti and I see the, yeah. and the nicely set table, old school table and everything yeah. and then when you go to present day, she's in her office, right? She's in her office, yeah. conference mm -hmm. room, eating and the bowl is so... A, a, it's a black bowl that's like half yeah. and I was wondering oh, yeah and I didn't know if that was a prop call or a dressing call that or, yeah that was intentional thank you that's super cool that you noticed it oh, <laughs> because yeah. that was exactly we I had a slide about that I wanted the vintage bowls that had the flowers on them to emulate that kind of grandma love for young Gabby to eat and then yeah that cut to 
where she is today. Yeah. The food is the same, but the bowl is different. You know, the bowl is rich. She's She's got money with her now, but the food is the same. The problem is still the same. So in that moment, spaghetti can represent, you know, depression. And that's kind of like the fun that we get to have artistic interpretation with. And uh, yeah, it's, I think it's, I think Gabby is, her style is almost forcing herself to try and forget the past of who she truly is, yeah. where she came from. Such an interesting character and, and interesting storyline. But yeah, the bowl stuck out to me because they did the cut where you're like, it's spaghetti there, it's spaghetti here. But to me, I'm like, that bowl is so significant that it's because it's obscured. It's like a half bowl. It's like, yeah. yeah. But it was a great choice because it made me think. <laughs> even if, Thanks, even uh, if I wasn't a decorator, I feel like I would have thought about that of like, oh, look at that I bowl. So. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it's a yin yang. Yeah. That's exactly what it yeah. is. How, <laughs> how, uh, how big is your crew on this show? Um, for me, I had um, Joe, Joe, Jules, Antoine, uh, and Victoria. So it was five Four. of us all. Nice, time. that's a good crew. I mean, it's a bit, an hour long is a lot. It's a lot to prep. Yeah, you... yeah. It's um, I'm always overseeing what's you know <clears throat> what what the next day is. That's kind of the prop master job. Yeah. I have two assistant prop masters. They are the executing the day of uh, and prepping the next day, and then I have a buyer who's always just out there, you know, <laughs> you know the buyer. <laughs> and then we have a, a, an extra assistant on set. <clears throat> so I, I saw that you have done a lot of the positions in the prop department. Did you have a favorite besides prop master? Let's just say, let's say you yeah. love it. <laughs> Which it sounds like I, you. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to, when I got into this business, props always spoke to me. Um, I, I really didn't want to do anything else for whatever reason i i wanted to hold captain america's shield you know yeah. I, I i think i said <laughs> it on another interview where i just ninja turtles i always oh. loved ninja turtles they all had different props and i thought that was cool and they were individualized um yeah so that's kind of <laughs> the how we kind of talk about it <laughs> well it's interesting because you know, I think that that's always the best way to be in this business is to have worked your way up so that you yeah. know what all these positions do. So when you you are higher, you know what to expect from people and what their job is. And um, totally. I think it's it kind of, you know, isn't always great when people just are a prop master. <laughs> yeah, like, and I, then, I've done know. every job that my team has yeah. done. And I would never ask anybody to do anything that I wouldn't. Exactly. And, uh, as a leader, I just want to lead with positivity and empathy. And I want, you know, I've, I've, I've had my experiences of negativity with people, you know, through my business. It's the film business and get a little crazy. I don't want it to happen to the future. I want us to be the change. And so, um, yeah, yeah I, I would say uh, to answer your question, I think prop buying was my favorite. I got to do that on a show called Sleepy Hollow, uh, which actually crossed over with Bones. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was John Zachary was John Zachary the production designer when you were there? I think he did Sleepy Hollow. No, he, he didn't do Sleepy Hollow. No, no. I, I didn't. I didn't get the chance to go over to Bones. Um, I think I think I'd, I had been. I don't think I was on that season. Oh no, I wasn't on Bones that. when they did the crossover either. But I feel yeah. like the, a friend of mine did Sleepy Hollow. But whatever. But yeah, gotcha. that was a great gotcha. show. That that was a fantastic looking show. Sleepy Hollow was was fun. I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina, originally, and that's where oh, nice. they shot the first season. And it was a treat to do because each episode was different and fantastical. So each episode was like a mini blockbuster, and especially when Len Wiseman is directing your pilot. And wow. so we got to do a lot in a little time, and the show was just beautiful for mm -hmm. it. I, 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 I that's why Sleepy Hollow is a special place in my yeah. heart. <laughs> You always know it's um I feel like all of us have a special like mm -hmm. I relate some shows to like oh that was like high school and that was my college and this is my after grad like this is my adult show or like you know I don't know <laughs> it's weird how you could start to relate shows to like that was a dark period that was dark <laughs> or like that was the best that was so stupid and that was Bro. the best like <laughs> I love it. I, I'm grateful for it because before I worked in the business, I worked at IBM. I did two years working at IBM. 
behind some cubicle, you know, and I, I, I couldn't tell you what day was what. And so I'm grateful to live uh, a life where I get to have a job where I can attach memories as I grow to these shows and always learn from them and always try to leave, you know, the place a little better than I, yeah. I found it. So yeah, <laughs> as soon as you said that, I was like, after yeah. bad boys for life yeah uh, <laughs> yep. uh, Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah, Every, stand against evil. <laughs> all of a sudden it just brings you back like something you're like yeah that was it that was that was a heyday or that was the best yeah. and then you start a new show and you're like this is awesome these people are great i love yeah. doing this work every day and then yeah. you know you you recycle to another great show. Hopefully, it's always yeah. always awesome. somehow somehow found felt like the culmination of all those good feelings that you, you exactly what you were talking about, and uh, it, it never went away. It was mm. one of one of those things you want kind of felt like oh it'll fade away, nothing gold can stay, and um, it's I think it's a testament to the creators and the directors of that show that it it felt like a family. And mm. I think when you make the crew feel like family you are yeah. gonna get everything out of us you know it's hard it's not that we don't want to it's just hard to work 12 hour days it's hard to work a frat day it's hard yeah. to what i haven't seen you know somebody's you know their kid for x amount of time so when you show that empathy like 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 the like nbc and berlanti productions did i think it really shows and it's really exciting to see it on found right now because yeah. i really think it's popping and i really think it's just such a beautiful thing that i hope that we can continue to do it I got to say, because my my sweet spot is an NBC show, Parks and Rec, and also oh, yeah. and also The Good Place. So maybe it's an NBC thing. <laughs> maybe there's a, maybe if, if there's a the vibe. Case, like, sign me up, because it's my first uh, NBC show. And um, yeah, it's they've been really very, very, very wonderful. And, and even in particular, I mean, during the strike, people are out of work, and Greg Berlanti Productions reached out to everyone who was working on a show and says, if you need help, oh, that's we will awesome. send you a visa card without having to like repay it. Oh, that's and awesome. They, and they sent it out to thousands of crew members and you didn't read about it in Variety or anything like that. It wasn't like, now we do this and now we're going to go brag about it. It was the sincerity that they gave back and they're helping people because the crew is the other half of making oh, filmmaking, yeah. as you know. And... Uh, in any medium that I can to thank them for that and to help my crew out who needed the help is just like, it makes me tear up and it's beautiful. That is so, fantastic. That is, that absolutely. really should be applauded. That is, that is fantastic. And yeah, that's generous anything and I can thoughtful. Do and, and, oh my God. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And we don't even, it's not like we want rap parties anymore. We just want like, not a fratter day. <laughs> like, keep, keep, keep your rap party. Give me a bonus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just say like set deck. I mean, a lot of times we have to work Saturday to wrap locations, but yes, like yes. we're tag teaming the crew at like 6 a.m. that they just got mm -hmm. done shooting and then we're there to take the set down. Like it's it's a, a cycle that hits every department when it, when it gets like that. And you really just want appreciation and because we're, we're all there because we love it and they're there yeah. there too they're the producers and everybody they're there there too because they love it and that's, addicted to it yeah and if the strike only bolsters that in my opinion yeah. is, is is and and you know what any other job that people go to people are going to complain about work so film people oh, we, are. we always go about work stop complaining that we complain about work it's fun yeah well that's what i would say like i'm not pushing concrete but it is hard like, it is right exactly draining. exactly um yeah I, I, so you've had off are you we don't know if there's a season two i don't know but um nope, are you do so. are you you're waiting we're just waiting for this strike to be over right yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're waiting for it to be over, but uh, with you know waiting for it to be over within strong solidarity. Yeah, um, I don't think I've ever been more thankful to be a union member, particularly with how times are. You know, we're not the only union, we're not the only industry that's striking right yeah. now, and it's 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 an interesting time. But yeah. for me, it's I'm I'm proud to stand in solidarity with them. I am too. I just 
if it's gonna it's taking this long i do i want you to get everything you want because it's taking this Get'em. long <laughs> so Absolutely. hopefully they got Absolutely. back to the tables today and hopefully there's some good news so when we'll be hopefully hopefully yeah <laughs> um is there any anything else you want to tell me how awesome found is i mean i feel like you've done a bravo job i mean i kind of want to bump off your decorator and get over there because it sounds like a great show <laughs> um <laughs> Honestly, I think if I if I think my favorite thing about found uh, I my my career trajectory is always to be doing kind of fantastical or sci fi. That's definitely like my genre because the objects have to be interpreted. And I love that. And when I was offered found, I said no to it because I thought I knew what it was. I was like, oh, uh, you know, kind of police procedural. That sounds boring. And I'm so grateful that I did take the job because every, I, was, I would come home and I would, I, I would talk to my wife and I would say, hey, you know, like these, these scripts, like actually like kind of cool. Like I think they're <laughs> like, they're actually saying something. They're using the medium of NBC to bring light to social issues. Like it's okay to be, it's okay to be trans. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to be an older queer black male. It's okay yeah. to be polyamorous. It's okay to be a sex worker. It's each episode is tackling these different subjects that I think a lot of people have kind of shied away from. Yeah. And they went into it in a smart way yeah. and, and, and hooking around the story of, of, of Gabby and sir with, with Shinola and Mark Paul at the head of it. I just, I don't know, it just kind of like, it seemed like lightning in a, in, a, in a bottle. So it's cool to just see it unleashed. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really excited that there are more stories that are about really cool social issues that I don't think are being talked about, but I think they're about to be talked about a lot more, not solely thanks to Found, but because Found is utilizing its platform to help elevate these stories. I, I, I completely agree. And I think one of the things it does well is because they're trying to find people who aren't in the media, who aren't number one up on the missing persons list. They're trying yeah. to find people who aren't getting the attention. So you connect with, there's somebody lost, there's somebody been taken and you want her to find them. And then you find out who these people are. So you've already yeah. connected you know, with the, with the older gay man that, and then you're, you know what I mean? Like, I think it breaks down your, your, um, your prejudice of, of who these people are, because at first you just have empathy that you want them to be found. So it's a, it's a wonderful it's way to write. It really is. A lovely way to, to think about it. And I think that's very important. Yeah. It's, I think that's the trick of the show. This hook of the show is kind of like, you don't really meet the person who's missing until the end of the episode. Yeah. You know, that, that's yeah. hard to do. Yeah. So yeah, that's, it's, a, it's upon us to bring that world, that person to life. And that's where I think found really shines is that it really takes, because you don't have that person there and they're the core of that episode. It takes all the other departments to come together and say, hi audience care about this person you haven't seen yet for the next 40 minutes yeah no it's great let me ask you last question any uh, film any tv show in history you wish yeah. you could have prop mastered the princess bride yes yes <laughs> but not even like no question uh the princess bride is the greatest movie that's ever been made uh it has every single genre mm -hmm. represented in a hour and a half it's yeah, fantastic. it's funny. It's heartbreaking. It's beautiful. It's secretly a Christmas movie because he's telling the story at Christmas. So that also counts. Um, but all the the props and all the night stuff, all the medieval stuff yeah. about that show, I would have loved to have absolutely have been a part of. Obviously, there are Star Wars and things like that, and Teenage well, Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's a great answer. Scott and Wilmington, uh, which I got to see the continuity photos of when I was coming up. They're all on Polaroids. That <laughs> blew my mind. But Princess Bride, final answer. That is a fantastic answer, and no one has ever given that answer before. So thank you very much. Oh, really? Much. Oh, yes. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. This was fantastic to connect with you and to appreciate your work. And I'm, um, I'm watching the rest of the season, man. Great job. Uh, 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I'm very much looking forward to checking out your work now. Oh, I can't wait to like see a Bones episode now and just oh, think yeah. about it. Hey, For All Mankind comes out November 10th, season four. Oh, you're doing For All Mankind. <laughs> yeah. I, I keep hearing amazing things about that. Uh, that's the space one now. Super fun to talk to him. Super fun. Um, I like found, and as I said, I do like the way that this story and the show is written. That you understand that that person isn't getting the attention that they should from the police because of this and that, but you feel for the person because they've been abducted or they've run away, like any whatever their circumstances. And then they reveal, you know, who the person is, whether they're good or bad, or they're a hooker, or they're, you know, uh, you know, just an uh, elderly gay man, like, as they said. You, I like that they're disguising who these people are and making you feel empathy for them before they reveal who they are. And I think that is a lesson in itself, and I think that's good writing, I gotta say. Um, and uh, props and the sets and everything, it's a good show. I heard it's doing really well. I actually read that today on um, probably Deadline. I think I read it on our IMDb Pro. The show's doing really well. I think it's either, it is an NBC show. I'm not sure if it's on, I forgot to ask if it's on NBC or if it's on Peacock, but found, check it out. And thank you so much to Jonathan. I appreciate his time. Um, I know people get busy even if you're not working or working people get busy and how about his producers sending out funds to their crew bravo to them that is fantastic that is so nice that is fantastic so uh bravo uh coming up I have I have a lot of Oscar hopefuls coming up and um i have been to a couple screenings of some awesome films that i still am not allowed to talk about so um i've got some screeners i'm not allowed to talk about them yet but man what this oscar season is a good one i am i am excited for all these films it feels feels like a feels like a good oscar season good oscar race this year it's not gonna be lame um yeah, and then we and then we have a strike, and then there'll be a lull. It's great. Uh, anyway, excited. I, I never want to say who I have coming up sometimes because schedules change and things happen, and so you know what happens. But I do have the film studies. Check those out uh, on YouTube and the podcast. And again, trying to release them every other week. It's a lot of work, but I'm trying. So yeah. I hope you got an earful. I'm Kim Monop for Decorating Pages. 